So I've been looking forward to this hard man to hunt down. Uh, a lot I can, Not that hard. yeah, a lot I can learn from him too. But whatever you do in life, you want to find whoever is the best at it. And without a doubt, everybody told me right away it's Mike uh, Bowie. All right, for the people brand new starting out, I was just asking Mike. Um, it's, it's such a crazy subject because I was saying reason. You know, one thing was uh, Gary Keller wrote that there's just so much information out there. But at the end of the day. How much is noise and how much is just keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what, you know, I caught myself doing is we want to learn every damn thing. Yeah. But the one little thing we need to just keep it simple with and do, uh, sometimes uh, we avoid. So what would be, uh, fast forward, your son just came in as his first day. Yeah. What would you say uh, to him? I would, uh, I would give him the real estate contract, the <laughs> residential purchase agreement. Okay, first. And the residential listing agreement. I would say, read this. And read it, highlight it, wherever you have questions. I love it. Everything else is noise. Because once you learn what the contract states and what to fill out and what it all means and how you can convey that to your client, mm. that's all the confidence that you need in real estate. Because the rest is building trust with someone yeah. and connecting with someone. Do they know you like you trust you, right? Exactly. And for them to trust you, then you know how to protect them by writing the right things into the contract for contingency purposes, mm -hmm. close of escrow dates that match their situation, their financial situation, their circumstance, whatever it may be. And same thing on the listing side, right? You know uh, when they need to move, how, where they're going to move to, and how you structure it within mm -hmm. your listing and your listing agreement and their time frame. Everybody mm -hmm. says there's a standard time frame of 90-day listing or 180-day mm -hmm. listing. Mm -hmm. Well, what if somebody wants to give you 122 days? Because that's either the day that they move out of the country mm -hmm. or they don't move. Know it so well, yeah. as we do on a subject, that you can get creative. Very much right? so. Like, like, And that's with any subject. I feel like you got to know it so well, you start to go further further up that you kind of... There's I, no I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say loopholes, but I would say you find creative ways that you know you know it yeah. inside out. Right? In that yeah. way. And so, that's it. Yeah. Everything else is noise. Uh, what I'm doing to somebody, uh, what I'm doing and my accomplishments is noise for someone else. Mm. Uh, when I first started, I would go, wow... This person's doing really great. They're doing this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And I would try to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't what I was good at. Right. And I would try to do that. I'd spend money in that way, and I wouldn't get a return on it, and i get discouraged. Then I figured out, you know what? I'm really good at talking to people. I'm going to go out there, and I did knock on doors, and I did do cold calls, and mm -hmm. it was very successful. Right. right? I smile on the phone, mm -hmm. and I got uh, to talk to some people. Granted, it works in certain markets, and certain other markets, no way in heck are you calling a country club. Right. I don't do any more cold calls whatsoever, right, right, right. but I do a lot of geographical that farming. Word, that word, though, cold calls. Like, yeah. We just thought of it about, you know, we're calling around the neighborhood, and you're just introducing yourself. Yeah. It's completely different. It's always something that is so yeah. cool, and so that's yeah. that's why I teach, because I, I feel like I, need, I want to be learning all the time. Yeah, that's that's really fascinated me too. I, I was reading this 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 pyramid that simu that reading is actually one of the the least ways to actually learn. The top of the pillar was uh, simulation, as in like video games, oh, right? Really? Or depending on what you're doing, if you're a pilot, pilots have those pilot simulators. Uh -huh. And then second to the first was obviously actually doing. Correct. Right. Correct. Um, so it doesn't matter what it is. This was Robert K Kiyosaki. He was a, a cash flow board game. He created kind of like uh -huh. Monopoly because it says that the highest way to learn is to actually simulate if you can if it's something that's correct, relatable correct. and that reading is actually at, at the bottom above that was actually writing uh -huh. things out but that's always just fascinated me uh, of the pillars uh, I learned a uh, lot I learned about the sales process I learned on um, how to uh, to explain myself well in, in uncomfortable situations mm -hmm. you know um, and then from there I, I got into online marketing mm -hmm. and um, I had a friend uh, named Scott Ruick who uh, had a marketing startup that, and he convinced me to, to quit my job and, and, and uh, work with him. He, he was like, you're in a tough business, man. I think he actually said you're in a crappy business. <laughs> uh, he said, he told me about the internet. He there's, told me about there's always fear doing. in taking that leap and trusting this guy though. What made you go? Uh, uh, yeah, obviously you had to really hate the kind of service that you said, screw it. I'm, I'm taking the leap. Yeah. That's what everybody's afraid of. They yeah. Want, they want to stay safe. I think, I think I learned what I could from, from the financial services, uh, 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 trip that I, I was on. He and hated it. He wanted Scott. He, yeah. he was willing to hear anything Scott yeah. said. Yeah, I, I did not like no, it. No, but obviously much. Scott's pitch was decent enough for you. Like, okay, well, this makes sense. Or else well, you would have never done it. Scott, I knew from um, uh, training under Frank Shamrock. I, we trained together under Frank Shamrock. Oh, trust is there. In like 98. Yeah. Is that, is that okay? 
you should always understand uh, the real estate market, yep. um, whether you're in real estate or not, because it real estate affects banking. That's, that's your value that you have, right? Exactly. You're offering advice. So being a real estate practitioner or in owning a firm, you have to know the market. Sure. You are, you're, always have to stay uh, abreast. You have to know what's going on, what factors are uh, affecting it. Granted, here in the Silicon Valley, I'll tell it's you, it's a little different. we are our own economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we are our own ecosystem. Uh, we have our own supply and demand when it comes down to jobs, to inventories, uh, shadow markets, and so many different um, markets. One of the most powerful uh, countries, it was the top five, it was like Germany, China, California. Wait, what? California's not a country. California, that's how powerful I mean, our economy if, is. If the Silicon Valley broke apart, we had the huge earthquake, mm -hmm. it'd be one of the wealthiest countries uh, on on its own just the because of the state. amount of, yeah. We're very lucky. So uh, obviously you agree, you're seeing kind of a trend of far less uh, inventory, obviously being where we're at, of course. More, more demand in, in buyers versus a buyer's market versus a kind of a transition between both. Uh, yeah. Where do you feel where at? Do you think we're starting to lean we're, transition anyway? No, we're still definitely sellers. a very, very strong uh, seller's market right. where the sellers can demand uh, quite a bit because the demand is there mm -hmm. and the inventory is scarce. Uh, but everyone needs to know that now this is the normal market. Humans love scarcity yeah. too. It motivates. It's, it motivates it's them, been right? this market for the past two and a half years. Mm -hmm. This is our normal market. There's no longer backtracking to the good old days where we had three or 5,000 properties inventory available in just Santa Clara County. We are going to continue to look at 1,700, 1,400, 1,400 closings, 800 actives, wow. those type of numbers. That's what's the reality. So that's our normal market. Mm -hmm. So as soon as everyone can start to see that that's what's normal mm -hmm. and for all of the um, when you become a professor, uh, at the beginning you had to travel a lot. You had to yeah. go to different places, different states, uh, because they give you a, just a two-year contract, a three-year contract. Right. So it's kind of like being in the military, and I really and, didn't want that. For and my you family. just got out of that from the navy, correct? The and Persian I just, Gulf. Yeah, I just uh, got out of that because of that. And I did just you have a kid, kid at that time? Uh, that? When I was at Stanford, uh, my son was just born. That's uh, huge. Right? And so I, I, you can just take off. Yeah, right? and yeah. start traveling, and, and so yeah, it changes it was, everything. I'm sure. Correct. I, I mean, it, it was a great institution. I learned a lot from that, uh, and I think that you know you you learn from all the experiences you have, uh, and you know, uh, having a, a degree from Stanford in these areas is is is, is valuable to a, to a lot of people. And right. but but for me, that doesn't really define who I am. I think that my actions and how you know I conduct myself and the mm. expectations that I set for myself or my students. So you were talking about what I said to the students on the first day is that my spiel has always been that you're going to work really hard for whatever <laughs> grade you get. Uh, because I think that that's what's important. I think Set the bar high right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. From the day one. I you're all going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, 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 no, because you work hard. There's no way. I never no, I like had a student that. That, that worked hard and didn't achieve uh, a, level, a, a high level of success. Right. And, and so that's the thing that, that I'm very clear is that I say I'm going to work hard for you. Mm. Uh, and that's a good thing and a bad thing because you know if I'm working hard my expectation is that you will do the same and Let me so ask you around my question uh, what uh, what do you think about these standardized tests and that whole shindig I, I mean um, I, I, training martial arts together and then Scott uh, um, told me he, you know hey I'm, I'm raising some money for this marketing startup and he told me all about it, it sounded really exciting and I trusted him he was a good friend of mine so I, I jumped in there and that just kind of uh, blew my mind like uh, so, what Scott did with the the money that he raised was he um, acquired a bunch of smaller startups mm -hmm. that um, had these really really talented motivated entrepreneurs that that founded them. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember the first day uh, uh, sitting around a table and you know it was a, a, a couple of groups of people where um, Scott had just bought their company and they and acquired them. them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so it was just I learned so much from these guys. I, I learned, I learned uh, about, you know, PPC and media buying and email marketing and affiliate marketing, but I also learned how to be an entrepreneur. I love that. And the fact that he bought them all out, it's weird because it's the startup mentality, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times uh, you would think, okay, well, he bought them out, you know, well, they're gone now, they're going to mm -hmm. vanish. But instead, they know, hey, this is the guy that bought us out, and they think of it as... Okay, there's no 
there, there's no, we're, we're all one, mm -hmm. right? We're all mm -hmm. one. And now that, because, you know, startup people, they're, they're, they're VC looking for funding. Yeah, right. Look at all the startups out there. Some kid that comes up to me and says he needs money mm -hmm. for a startup. As soon as he has, he's like, okay, now I got what I want to get. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. Yeah, How he, can I do this? How can we grow together? He did something really interesting. And he, he had to be a good leader. He, to, to he, he knew all these people already. Okay. And so he raised this money and he looked for the most talented people he knew and he tried to cut them in on this thing. And so, um, it, it, but they were doing the same thing kind of, so their vision yeah, was the it, it was like, they all had their specialties in online market got it, got and, it. and he acquired their company. So they would work for that, got it. The, uh, his company, the PPC, pay-per-click you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Email marketing, affiliate marketing, display marketing, uh, um, affiliate marketing okay. this kind of thing. Um, so I learned a lot from that group and a group of, uh, of those guys and I ended up, uh, breaking off and, and, uh, trying a couple startups together. Mm -hmm. And um, and that that's what led to Smash. That's we were doing the the, the Texas marketing. Awesome. And, and for those of you, let's say there's a kid out there, no idea what the hell affiliate marketing have is. Have it uh, in the back. Look how good nice. you look, man. So hey. how, how are things going? Things are going great. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, though. Appreciate it. And appreciate uh, it. definitely appreciate the Cra kudos. crazy, humble, crazy, nice to me since I met him. We met through a mutual friend. Yeah. As, as well, but um, how does it feel, man? To be top forty, under forty. I mean, all the hard work. Uh, the top 40 or the top sales, it's just a byproduct of just helping people Accol going out there, and getting them into the homes, doing what you're supposed to do on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. And those things just become byproducts. So, mm -hmm. um, just focusing on a client at a time. So, so you're intro before. Yep. But now it's a little different. Now you're done with the two years and you transition and you opened up your own spot in yeah. 2013. 13. Right. And what, what, could, what could you say about that difference between, you know, your first day? And versus, because now it's different. Now, now you're doing. Uh, now you're building a blueprint. Now you're building yeah. an organization. Um, so it, it's a lot different when you're working at a brokerage and you have a broker. Um, you have someone's house that you're in, mm -hmm. and you're basically working there. Mm -hmm. Versus having your own complete own own shop, all the liabilities. I mean, you're going from. Uh, the lease down to employees, HR, 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 everything huge. itself. Yeah. Uh, but it's something that you kind of build upon. You, yeah. you don't just jump right into opening your own brokerage, right? right? Uh, I, I was with, a, when I first started in real estate, I was with a small shop. Mm -hmm. And we soon learned that, you know, we want to learn more corporate structure. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us jumped ship and we went over, I went over to Intero mm -hmm. and learned from the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And after uh, almost three years stint with Intero, decided to say, you know what, I've learned enough to go out on my own. Nice. So you stayed an extra year after two. Yeah. Cool. That's what I mean my next so, question. And people have that type of stuff. But in my mind, I completely agree with you. I think somebody is more diplomatic that you're only going to get so far. I keep thinking back. It was your quote or uh, Rudy Oates. I think it was you. Um, but uh, he, he said something along the lines that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go uh, far, go together. Yeah, so that's a, pay attention. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> a great quote. I, it's definitely not uh, mine or Rudy's. I think it's. I've tried to look up that quote because yeah. I like it so much. Yeah. And I uh, the 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 I think most um, legitimate source says it's an African problem. And, and you and you know yeah. what that means is that even if it was the person, somebody else, they heard it from another person. Right. 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 right yeah. Um, yeah. When it's, we when, it's we, when we talk, uh, we're just repeating. What other people have told us. That's right. right. When That's we right. listen, we might learn something. Yes, Dalai Lama. I'm getting too deep. <laughs> you're, the, you're the quote guy, but it's absolutely true, yeah. right? Uh, but uh, let's uh, let, let's keep it moving. So, so then we opened our third location. We we, we, we opened the third location in Milpitas. Milpitas. So yeah, that was. I was happy for you guys. Like yeah. that was the you know what I mean? yeah because the it, combination of square footage, everything you guys envisioned. Because you can't always have a perfect. And, and when you variables. go from zero to one. You just learn so many lessons, and from when you go from one to two, you learn a lot, a lot of lessons. But I, I, I agree with you. When I felt like we were able to go from two to three, um, it, it's like we we knew we could continue to replicate this. Right. So yeah, Morgan and the rest of them obviously a year younger, but we're in the same uh, classes. So, uh, but it was nothing, nothing but great times. You remember the thing I was telling you about? Um, 
Sweden, I think, when we were uh, eating uh, uh, lunch about how they kind of were second to last in education and then they ended up moving up to first. And I think it was Michael Moore's documentary trying to figure out exactly why. Mm -hmm. And the two things that they did was eliminate uh, homework and increase uh, uh, outdoor activities and, and, and recess. And I think that was for um, from high school all the way down and they saw that it actually improve their standardized yeah. test and he was curious so well you just let them run around outside it's like no if they want to climb a tree they climb a tree but when they come back we just we talk correct, about correct. what they learned when they were climbing a, a, a tree what, what, are, what are your thoughts uh, on that uh, Cause yeah I know, I know it's because obviously you're open to trying new things right I'm open to trying new things and I think that uh, sometimes that decisions are not made exactly. based on research and I think that yeah. that if, if you have research that says you know homework is it doesn't make any difference uh, right. For some reason, we continue to do this, right. uh, and so we're kind of stuck. Uh, and, and change is difficult. People, people are very reluctant to, to change anything. That was that was the next thing I was going to ask you. It's probably most likely the powers of be correct that uh, wouldn't be open. For example, to that there's and... plenty of research that says the students uh, should start the day a lot later in the day. Right. And and you know that seems like a simple thing. You know, instead of starting at eight, let's start at nine, nine thirty, so the students will be more that's alert, another, more yeah, focused. That's, no, that's another thing. That uh, done, because yeah. for me, as a teacher, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, right. you know, whether I get off at 3.15 or 4.15 or 5.15, mm. you know, I adjust accordingly. And so it seems like something should be easy to do. Right. Uh, for some reason, the mechanism is not there for change. And even, even if we don't want to do it, what kind of test trials and methods are we doing year after year to slowly start building this research before we pull the trigger and implement something, Correct. right? The, the answer is nothing. Absolutely not. Right. So. Yeah, because it, it, it's just kind of the people just dig the heels in and go, you know, when you trans and you're DS, you go around. Man. <laughs> what up? Here? That's, 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 that's good. Interesting. Uh, you're a kid in uh, Bakersfield. You saved up uh, a little money. You're about, you want to, you're hungry. You want to open up, you know, from scratch, your, your typical similar smash. You know, you're a wrestling champion in your whole cross state, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. What advice, if any, looking back, could you give uh, that kid? Uh, obviously, you're going to need to sit down with him for about four hours or something with me, yeah. but if you only had an, an elevator yeah. an elevator pitch to him, what would you tell him if he approached uh, you? That was a complete curveball. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I think that, um, I guess. Uh, obviously, not, not give up. That's what you really want to do, right? Find a way. Oh yeah, I mean it's it, the the perseverance thing is huge, you know. And I guess if you're talking about like high level, mm -hmm. um, you know, not specifics, uh, mm -hmm. uh, perseverance is huge. I mean, uh, from, the, your, from your blueprint, don't be afraid to ask for help. Well, I, I think perseverance, focus, and then um, EQ. Yeah, we were talking emotional about EQ. Uh, we were talking about emotional God, intelligence. Me. Uh, earlier and so I think those three things if I had to say you know um, off the top of my head are are what uh, make people successful um, especially in business and, and I wanted to I was going my, 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 my spiels on Facebook but I wanted to say you know you got to have heart and when people hear that they think of the athlete that has heart yeah. but I'm not even talking about that I think in business you can have all the things in the world right. but emotional uh, yeah I mean the, the part, not being empathetic to uh, any personality to everyone Right. Well, for maybe your your dad, you, right. talk, you talked about your dad earlier, not wanting partnerships. Maybe he was just talented and right. hardworking enough not to need them. Right. But for me, I would be nowhere without my partnerships, right. and I truly believe that. And that means emotional intelligence. That means that you have to be able to uh, be, be forgiving, mm -hmm. and that means your your team has to be forgiving because mm -hmm. we all make mistakes. I make so many mistakes all day long, you know. 100%. And and so the people around me have been forgiving enough. To, to look past that, and then I remember that when I think they made a mistake. And uh, that's, that's one uh, semi-awkward question, I think. Well, obviously, you've got great players, so it makes life easy for you guys to agree.